question related to DNA markers. So you test the DNA as well as um, looking at your blood markers and well, many other markers as well. So what do you consider more important, the DNA or the blood? I mean, and what percentage of a recommendation comes from the DNA that somebody has? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. And uh, I think that there is a lot of confusion in the uh, general public about that. So, so what, what I want to say that generally in a, a lifestyle related issues, not in cancer or uh, diseases, mm -hmm. the effect of the DNA is much more minor than the uh, importance of the blood biomarkers. So uh, let, let me give you an example. If you look at the uh, food sensitivity, there are uh, some uh, single nucleotide polymorphism or score, a combination of those uh, single nucleotide polymorphism that showing that you might have a high risk to be gluten in, uh, intolerance or nut intolerance. Usually that cover, let's say, a uh, between five to 10% of uh, the chance. So basically you have 100% and it's covered only 10%. So most likely, even if you have high risk for a gluten intolerance based on your genetics, most likely that you won't be gluten intolerant. okay? If you um, look at a, a other uh, DNA scores, like a score for high glucose, it said that you have the potential to have high glucose. It doesn't mean that 1% you have high glucose. So it's most important to check your glucose and see, hey, you have high glucose, then to just say, hey, you have high risk, because maybe you will have this, uh, this risk will happen when you will be 100, but you are only 40, so you don't have the risk yet. Basically, the risk, but uh, the situation in your body, the blood biomarkers show that you don't have it. So I think that combination of blood and DNA together is the right way to do it, because then you, you know, okay, I have high risk for high glucose, but I don't have high glucose. So what what happening here? Most likely, uh, either I'm doing a good job and I'm maintaining the, my glucose uh, based on nutrition and lifestyle and exercise to stay in the normal or optimal range. Or alternatively, I need to still be cautious and uh, take and uh, monitor my glucose very carefully because I still have the high risk. Okay. Now, if you have a high risk for high glucose and you also have high glucose. That means that uh, unfortunately you receive a bad card if you are uh, taking the analogy of uh, the casino in Vegas. So you receive a bad card, but still you can play them better. So try to work harder and you have a chance to decrease the glucose even so that you have high risk for high glucose. So uh, to answer your question in a, in a nutshell, I would say that uh, uh, the data of the blood biomarkers is much more important because that shows what happened in your body right now the data from the DNA is just a risk. I mean, would you say that people should know what their DNA is? Would that be important? Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, a knowledge is a power. So mm -hmm. I think that everyone know, need to know what are the risks they have and the, uh, and the risk is based on the DNA and uh, what's happening in their body today. And also, very important, is to know the data of your blood in at least a few uh, points in the past. Because then you can have a trend. And if you have a trend of your blood and suddenly it's going and jumping, you know that something wrong happening. But if you have only one point or two points, it's very hard to make a trend. So if you will ask me, what is my recommendation? Definitely do a DNA test, but also have at least a few time points of your blood and then continue to monitor it. And if you see something that jumping, then you know jumping up or down, then you know that something changed because you have your own baseline. You, you need to establish your own baseline. And you, it's very hard to establish baseline without enough data. You talk, um, when you were talking about the way that the algorithm is built, uh, it's using peer-reviewed uh, data, which is great. So does it also take like results from your, your experiment? Well, not experiments, but your recommendations and what happens. Yeah. And does that get fed back in as well? Yes. And uh, let, let me give you an example. I think that it's a, a good example for... Um, uh, for the subject that uh, 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 your podcast is a uh, uh, focus on, uh, the longevity. So we develop a, a, a feature that's called inner age. And the inner age is basically allow you to uh, know what is uh, your internal age based on the blood biomarkers that you have. So we have now a, a big database of, uh, I would say, the biggest database of a free range humans that are healthy humans, because a lot of the databases have a lot of sick people. 
And based on that, we can see what blood biomarkers are increasing with age and what blood biomarkers are decreasing with age. And then based on that, we can come in and plot yourself based on your age and gender and see if it's going up and you are uh, below the uh, graph, that means that you are younger for this biomarker comparing to uh, the population. If it's going down and you are below, that means that you are older. And then we can give you the score for which blood biomarkers, basically glucose making you one year young, younger or older and the LDL making you one and a half year younger or older and so on. Then we combine all of that together and give you now one number that call your inner age. And then you can uh, 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 compare it to your chronological age and see if in total you are younger or older. Because we are giving you the breakdown of the blood biomarkers, we can build you a plan that say, okay, it sounds like the major issue that you have are glucose and LDL. Let's work on them. And hopefully when you test again, you can see an improve in your inner age. And hopefully because those markers really related to longevity, hopefully you live a better, longer life. So, so that's the idea uh, of uh, inner age. And that's something that they uh, built on top of uh, our database of insert factor. Interesting. And so how would, w- would you be able to relate inner age to like some of the epigenetic based clocks? Yeah, so I think that that's a, a it's a bit different. So I, I think that a, a, if you want me to compare a, the inner age to the epigenetic clock, I will say the following. Epigenetic clock are very, very accurate. They are extremely accurate. So basically they can give you a, a very precise age of your body uh, that is independent. It's not based on your day that you have been born, but based on an independent way. So that's mm-hmm. great. Uh, the issue with the epigenetic uh, age is that it's a black box. What I mean, it doesn't explain to you why you are older or younger than your chronological age. So it's very hard for you to know why you are older or younger. That's one. The second one is that uh, it's very hard to modulate it. So it's, not, it's very hard with the uh, um, epigenetic age that you have today to come and say, okay, you should exercise more, you should eat this uh, nut, or you should eat uh, more of that food, or you should caloric restrict it yourself, and then you will see a, a decrease in your uh, epigenetic age. Uh, we are in the process of actually building something like that, that will be, I call it lifestyle responsive epigenetic age, that basically it's responsive for those intervention. And then it will be easier, and I think the right time to sell it to consumer because then we can come and tell you, uh, Richard, we calculate your uh, uh, epigenetic age and I know you are two years older than your chronological age. And those are the intervention that uh, most likely will help you to decrease your epigenetic age. Today, you cannot do it. It's basically, it's not something that uh, uh, there is a logic behind because it's a black box and it's even developed to be responsive for a lifestyle a intervention. So that's the limitation of the epigenetic age today, but we are working to make it a bit more, uh, let's say, ready for consumer to use and uh, enjoy and benefit from.